This is Professor Davenport the Pug with a reading of The Craven by Edgar Allan Pug. Once upon a midnight dreary, while Pug pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious snack, yet wanting more, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping on Pug's chamber door. Tis some visitor, Pug muttered, tapping on my chamber door. Or could it be something more? Ah, distinctly, Pug remembers. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrote its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, Pug wished the morrow. Vainly, Pug had sought to borrow from Pug's snacks surcease of sorrow, sorrow for lost convenience store, for the rare and radiant haven that is named convenience store, nameless here forevermore. And the silken sat on certain rustling of each purple curtain, thrilled Pug, filled Pug with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of Pug's heart, Pug stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating, entrance at Pug's chamber door, or could it be something more?" Deep into that darkness peering, long Pug stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no Pug ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered convenience store. This Pug whispered, and an echo murmured back, convenience store, merely this and nothing more. Once... Open here, Pugs flung the shutter, went with Pugs' dreams of supper. In their step, a tasty snack of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance matey, not a minute stopped or steady, but with mane of little Debbie, perched above Pugs' chamber door. Perched above, a bust of Slim Jims, just above Pugs' chamber door. Perched and sat and nothing more. Then this tasty snack beguiling, my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though my coconut be shaven, and will satisfy Pug's craven, found in grand and ancient haven, that was once convenience store. Tell Pug what thy lordly name is, on shelf of convenience store. Quote the snack, nevermore. Much Pug marveled, almost sanely, hearing discourse thus so plainly, though its answer, little meaning, little relevance he bore. Though we cannot help agreeing that no Pug or living being ever yet was blessed with seeing snack above Pug's chamber door, snack or treat upon the sculpted bust above Pug's chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the snack, still beguiling, all Pug's fancy into smiling, straight Pug wheeled a cushioned seat in front of snack and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, Pug betook itself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous snack of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous snack of yore. Mets and croaking, nevermore. Then Pug thought the air grew denser, perfumed by an unseen censer, swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch Pug cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe, from memories of convenience store. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind nepenthe, and forget convenience store. Quoth the snack, nevermore. Prophet, said Pug, thing of evil, prophet still of snack or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, Pug implores, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell Pug, tell Pug, Pug implores, quoth the snack. Nevermore. Prophet said Pug, thing of evil, prophet still of snack or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, 
by thy God we both adore. Tell Pug soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a tainted haven that we call convenient store. Clasp a rare and radiant haven known as convenient store. Quoth the Pug, nevermore. Be that word or sign of parting, snack or fiend, Pug streaked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no crumb behind as token of that lie thy soul hath broken. Leave Pug's appetite unbroken. Quit the bust above Pug's door. Take thy taste from out Pug's mouth. Take thy form from off Pug's door. Quoth the snack nevermore. And the snack, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallet bust of Slim Jims, just above Pug's chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And Pug's soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.